a blade and... You don't think twice before reaching for your sword, do you? <laughs> do you have any idea how long I've been tracking these targets? And now you get to stake a claim! <laughs> you think you're stronger because you got to them first? <laughs> Mark my words, vengeance will be mine! Uh, what? That's right. I heard the commotion and came as swiftly as I could, only to find you two already fighting the Fatui. Not only that, you are making quick work of them, too. If I didn't make my move, you would have been able to take all the credit. Still, I'm glad you're unscathed. Confronting that number of Fatui at once can be dangerous. Uh, sorry, Paimon doesn't understand what you mean, but thanks for your concern. Concern? Why would I be concerned for the safety of my arch enemies? Arch enemies? Wait a minute! You were saying how glad you were that we were unscathed a second ago! By which I meant, if you were injured, I'd have to escort two strangers guilty of stealing my targets all the way back to Mondstadt. 
which would mean you'd cause me even more trouble. My vengeance would be swifter still. Huh? So that's how you see all this? Yes, that's me. Hyman thinks she's pretty strange. Although at least we can communicate with her. You dare to call someone you've just met strange? Forget the aristocracy. That's rude even by normal standards. Speaking of which, how do you know my name? This is the honorary knight of the Knights of Favonius. And speaking of rude, we're trying to investigate an aristocrat named Schubert Lawrence. He's so obsessed with etiquette that he's not even willing to speak with us. <laughs> I understand now. That's my uncle, all right. But why do you mean to investigate him? <sighs> I see. <laughs> you have some nerve to faming a family member right in front of me. I will have vengeance for this, too. No, no, no! This is an assignment from Master Jean! It's just an investigation, that's all! To the everyday citizens of Mondstadt, everyone in the Lawrence clan is scum. It's natural for rumors and unwarranted gossip to lead to such suspicion. Hard to avoid such a reputation when you're known as the ruthless rulers of old Mondstadt. Oh, so that's what you think of me? Hm. Yet another transgression to avenge. But... didn't you say it first? Oh... <laughs> Curious. We've only just met. And you've already given me three causes for vengeance. It's been a while since I've encountered anyone as interesting as you. I assume you need me to teach you the conduct of the Lawrence clan. Only then will you finally be able to communicate with my uncle, correct? That's right. Amber told us to come and talk to you. Well then, let's begin your training immediately. It'll be easier to train when we're back in Mondstadt. We'll require other people. We can put that aside for now. Besides, if it's the Acting Grandmaster's assignment, and Amber's the one who recommended me, I should comply. Uh, Paimon's confused. This girl's all, vengeance this and revenge that! But she doesn't seem the least bit angry. Still, Paimon has met bigger weirdos before. Let's get out there and make some friends. Check this out! Ooh, what's in here? You finally arrived. There's no time to spare, so we'll begin with our first lesson. Wait, hold on. There's something we need to clear. 
clear up first. Otherwise, it'll keep bugging us. So that's still on your mind, huh? Maybe you're the ones who can't let things go. <laughs> Don't worry. There's a time and place for exacting vengeance. Besides, I'm not in the mood for any right now. Best save it for later. Uh, you need to be in the right mood for vengeance. I already have a long list of vengeance to exact. Even if I wanted to begin now, I'd have to start in the right order. Who knows how long it will be before I get to you. <laughs> well, if you have so much to take care of, wouldn't it just be easier to give us a clean slate? Absolutely not. Stealing my targets, calling me a ruthless ruler, and suspecting my uncle. All worthy of vengeance in my eyes. But you needn't worry, at least not whilst we're investigating this matter. I'm sure you're familiar with the phrase, a man of moral integrity fears no slanderous attack. If Uncle Schubert didn't commit any wrongdoing, then any such investigation will prove fruitless. But if he did commit a wrongful act, then he should bear the full punishment. I'm sure you understand. Good. Now, there are two key points that aristocrats attach great importance to. Your manner of speech, and your bearing. Let's begin with your manner of speech. Aristocrats have a very unique way of carrying conversation, even with mundane daily topics. Oh, Paimon's already learned some unique conversation! Mark my words! Vengeance will be mine! <sighs> Not even close. And besides, it sounds strange. Hey! Hyman learned it from you! And didn't you say not to call others strange? It seems you don't respect the rules of your own clan! No, I've no need to trouble myself with such frivolous formalities. Here, allow me to demonstrate. For example, when greeting a friend, you could say, As the morning dew greets the coming dawn, so do I greet you, my dear friend. Uh, as the morning dew does what now? However, such a phrase may only be used during the morning hours. Also, the party with whom you're speaking must be of approximately the same status as you. Morning dew is not uncommon so it expresses that friendship should not be measured by value, yet also suggests that friendship between aristocrats is pure like water. Oh, no, no, no. You must be prudent with your words. Calling someone a good friend could easily offend them. Uh, but didn't you just say my dear friend in your example? Hyman's confused. Yes, I did. But you must know in the Lawrence family, dear friend is a set phrase that can only be used towards certain friends with whom one is acquainted, but not particularly close. It sounds much more pleasant to call an acquaintance a dear friend. So another thing to remember, aristocrats are concerned with face and being polite. However, if you were to use dear friend to address an intimate friend, the recipient would think that you were deliberately trying to estrange them. This is only the first step in making a greeting. After addressing one another, you then exchange courtesies. Wait, wait! This is all too abstract! Um, perhaps it would be better if you gave some real-life demonstrations. Ah. Very well. Come with me. We'll choose some bystanders to converse with. 